Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are gonna be starting a new series on the channel. We're gonna be looking at the promos that come out for 2020 in FIFA Ultimate Team. I, I figured I'd start it now because it's 2020, it's team of the year, it's the start of a new year, and last year, this is when the promos started going nuts uh, in FIFA 19. FIFA 19, when it actually turned to 2019, a lot of the promos stepped it up. EA stepped it up with the promos, with the content, with the cards, with the SBCs and objectives. Um, and I've been wanting to do a series like this for a while. So we're going to do a series called Rate the Promo because I feel like this would be something cool that I can do with you guys. It's mostly going to be, um, it's not just going to be me, is what I'm saying. Basically what I'm going to do with this series is I want to uh, bring people on with this series. I want to have like somebody new join me each and every time we do one of these. We'll probably have some repeat people as we go down the line. But I want to bring other content creators alongside me, do these videos together, and kind of get two people's ideas and get two different uh, uh, thoughts, two different trains of thoughts uh, kind of going and just talk about the previous promo that would have just ended and uh, kind of our thoughts on that because I think these types of videos are fun and, and, and cool. Uh, and it gives us kind of a good thing to talk about inside of FIFA and always looking to improve the game. You know, I'm not saying that EA should watch these videos, but I do think that they can, they could probably learn a few things from us watching these videos and maybe even make some better promos in the future. And it's just something cool that I think we can do talking about a good promo or maybe, you know, criticizing a less than uh, desirable promo as well. So basically what I'll be doing is we'll be talking about the players that are in packs, the upgrades for the cards, uh, the player selection along those lines. We'll look at the SBCs and we'll also look at the objectives and kind of consider the whole promotion as a whole. We'll give it a rating out of out of the at the end out of 10. So kind of like a match rating, we'll rate the promo out of 10. So I think that's going to be pretty cool. And again, like I said, it's going to be there's going to be people that I bring on to do this with me. It's not just going to be me sitting here talking to you about my thoughts on this promo because then you're like, "Well, what's the, this dude? It's just one dude putting his thoughts on YouTube about the promo." I want to have another influencer, another content creator uh, from Twitter, from uh, YouTube, from Twitch, whatever, join me and uh, and, and kind of put their thoughts alongside mine for this promo, but th this is the first one. So this is just gonna be the rough go at it. This is the very first rate the promo episode number one. And we're doing team of the year, FIFA 20. We're starting 2020 off with this promotion. As many of you guys know, this started last Monday. So it's been out for a full week, actually eight days technically, was the length of this promo, which, which is also something a little bit different. They don't usually uh, extend the promos into Monday as well, but I guess that's one more day they could run lightning rounds, one more day they can make money. So they saw the opportunity there and they went for it. But first I wanna talk about our first segment of Rate the Promo. We're gonna talk about the players, we're gonna talk about the team selection, and we're gonna talk about the card upgrade boost. Now obviously this is team of the year, right? We know that team of the year, we get some of the best cards in the game. This Mane card was great. And I, I think we should start with talking about the voting because obviously they started with the voting with the uh, website that was open where we could vote for our team of the year players um, and put our own squad together and give us that opportunity to vote, which is cool, right? They just started doing that a couple years ago. I think it was like FIFA 17 or FIFA 18 where they first gave us the ability to even vote. And even back then it was like with the ballot boxes, right? It was with the... Um, those ballot boxes that they gave to the big name content creators, they gave it to pro players and stuff like that. Um, and, and that's how we voted technically. But this year, basically anybody could vote. So I thought that was pretty cool. That's a GG. Thank you EA for that. Allowing like everybody to vote this year on their team of the year. So that was pretty cool. But again, for the players that got I, I thought it was a lot of deserved players that got in. I, I thought there wasn't too much of like the FIFA bias that really came out here. You know, a lot of people like to vote on cards that they would like to see in FIFA and not based on real life performance. I think they found a good mix here with real life performance and with, with FIFA and, you know, in game, how these cards are going to feel and play in game as well, along with the meta and, and what kind of teams people are using. I was at first thrown aback by how many Liverpool players there were in this team of the year, but that's just because I'm not a Liverpool fan. And if you are, you're loving it. I mean, how many Liverpool guys we got in here? We got one, two, three, four, five. Five Liverpool players in the team of the year. That's almost half, which is crazy. That almost half of the team of the year is Liverpool. But they had a fantastic year, so I think it, it is it is deserved. It is warranted uh, with the guys that did get in. Uh, De Jong, I think De Jong, Delict, and then Trent. 
and maybe Mane as well were kind of like the guys this year that we were like super duper pumped to have because they were different, right? Like this team of the year is so different from what we've had in the past in terms of player selection, in terms of the cards that we've had. I mean, in years past, the, the uh, team of the year was predominantly just uh, dominated by La Liga, right? Barcelona, Real Madrid, cards like that were all over the team of the year. In fact, if we actually take a look back at some of the other, like the past two team of the years, FIFA 19, we've got Modric, we've got Messi, we've got Marcelo, Ramos, Varane, there's five players right there from La Liga, and then you have some Prem guys with Van Dijk, De Gea, Conte, De Bruyne, uh, but then, you know, again, it was just, it was dominated by those La Liga players. FIFA 18 as well. You've got Ronaldo when he was at Real Madrid. You've got Messi. You've got uh, Modric again. You have Marcelo, Ramos. So again, five players from the same league there as well. So uh, it used to be, you always had your Ramos and your Marcelo and your Modric uh, and, and stuff like that with the Ronaldo and Messi both being from La Liga. I think it was just cool this year that we got a lot of Prem players and it was just different guys in the team of the year. You know, it's just kind of cool to see how the sport of football progresses, how players progress, and the cards that do uh, get into team of the year as some of the best players in the world. So I thought the team selection was solid. I was, I'm was i good with it. I'm cool with it. Uh, and I, on, I also feel like some of these guys made team of the year cheaper this year. Allison being a little bit lower rated of a goalkeeper. Um, I thought that, you know, 440K for a team of the year card is pretty nuts. Even 770 for Robertson. Like last year, Marcelo's card, he was right around a million coins, 900,000 coins for most of the year. Uh, having his team of the year center back under a million coins is pretty nuts as well. Uh, a team of the year attacker at like 2.5 is also pretty crazy. I don't think we've had a team of the year attacker that cheap until like since like Harry Kane's days because none of these guys last year were cheap. That's for sure. Uh, but Harry Kane was probably like the, the next kind of cheapest team of the year card if we go back a couple years. So it was just cool to see the different players in this year's team of the year. And the stat boost that they got were, of course, massive as well. De Young with a huge stat boost. De Bruyne with a massive stat boost. I think the overall three or the overall cards that were the most boosted and the most uh, surprises to us. Maybe not a surprise, but just had the X factor from team of the year. Van Dyke getting a 99 rated card was nuts. Um, Messi 99 was deserved. I would have liked to see a little bit more boosting, like on the, the shot, especially, and even the pace. Like, give Messi 99 pace, give him 99 shot. Why not? Just why not? And then Ronaldo getting a 99 card as well. Uh, the voting for that, that 12th man was kind of interesting as well. Was it really... Did we really want Ronaldo? A lot of people voted for Lewandowski, but it was going to be hard for Ronaldo not to win that, being Cristiano Ronaldo... And of course, that helps EA sell packs. So again, for the, the player selection, the boost of the upgrades, and just the overall team, the car design as well. Can we talk about that for a minute? The car design, unbelievable. What a lovely car design. Beautiful, beautiful car design. I love like the 3D imaging, you know? That's like the first time we've ever had that in foot with like the, the 3D imaging on the bottom of the cards. So that looks freaking sick. I was a huge, huge fan of that. So let's talk about some of the new players. We'll talk about objectives. Uh, and SBCs as well. So objectives, we got two main objective players, right? We had the Ziyech player moments card, which this one is still available right now. Three days, 15 hours left at the time of this video. A good looking card. If you're somebody who likes to panini, collect the cards, you know, like a card collect. This is a card that you can, you can definitely throw in the squad if you've got uh, maybe man of the match, not man of the match. Ones to watch, Quincy Promes. If you've got um, the Tagliafico, Left back objective that you did. This guy could slot perfectly on that left side. You could you could fit something in there. Maybe you have like Malin or uh, Bergwins for some of the other team of the weeks that were early on. Maybe you have one of those. Red, this guy could help you link out some of those. So that's a cool objective right there with the Ziyech card. And then I'm going to take us over to Footbin again to look at some of the other cards that came earlier on that are no longer in the game. We have the Andres Iniesta uh, objective card. Which again, the promo started out and it was just kind of like the objectives and the SBCs were just, they were okay. It was just like, yeah, it was just okay. This uh, Iniesta card, it was doable, but they didn't give you a ton of time to do it. And I just wish they would have boosted his stats a little bit more on the Iniesta card as a flashback. Manuel Neuer was a nice SBC if you're, if you're a Bayern fan. But now seeing that Team of the Year Allison is 400k and so many people have packed him in upgrade packs, was that SBC really worth it? Don't really know. David Luiz, the next SBC player that we got. Um, I am about to end up 
finishing crafting this card tonight at the end of team of the year but there was no way i would have done this sbc without having upgrade packs out i mean this this card was overpriced it wasn't as big of a boost as uh the david louise from last year so i wasn't a huge fan of that sbc card but it was just okay right the real winner out of all the sbc cards that we got this year on foot has to be bernardo silva bernardo silva this is a big time dub. You know, 287,000 coins for a card that many people have compared to Gold Messi. That card is 900,000 coins, almost a mil. This guy's 200K. It was very easy and very cheap to craft if you were doing upgrade SBCs. And this helped out a lot of players' teams, right? It's just a nice card to collect. And it's nice that Bernardo Silva gets some recognition for a player moments card. That, I think, was the best SBC card that was released uh this week that was the best one the other ones were just kind of okay again marcelo we would have loved to see a bigger boost on a card like this we already did Ferland mendy right maybe make this make this card a bit more juice give it 90 pace give it like 85 86 defending 88 physical 80 shot 90 passing 93 or 4 defending like if you would absolutely juice this card and still require the same price people would have went out and do it right but the upgrade on this in terms of the I mean, it's like a double inform upgrade, and he went up plus three. I just wish they would have uh, boosted this card more, especially for Marcelo being in so many of the past team of the years, FIFA 18, FIFA 19. Come on, man. Give him a huge, huge boost. Sure, make him 300,000 coins as an SBC, but give him a massive stat boost. That's a kind of a common theme that we saw during this promo was just the, the stat boost was not there, except... For this Eden Hazard card. I think Eden Hazard got a really nice boost. And this one's kind of interesting as well. Because it's almost like an Icon SBC. Uh, this one has no expiration date. This this card is out for the rest of the year. Sorry about hitting the mic. Uh, this card is out for the rest of the year. As far as we know it. So um, that's something that I'll probably be crafting during team of the season. Because that to me looks like a TOTS card. And uh, it's going to be way easier to craft from upgrade SBCs during that time so that's basically all the players sbcs that we got this promo we got a couple player of the months as well trent alexander arnold and then luis suarez uh, so again the the sbcs this promo the player sbcs were just okay i think they were just okay we had a really good bright spot with bernardo silva and the rest were kind of just okay right that's kind of how i see it but the really the real thing that shines about this promo and the, the thing that i'm so glad ea did was they dropped the good upgrade packs again and for somebody who was on a high budget this is what really really made this promo this year the premier league the new year's premier league upgrade the twenty-five thousand coin pack that gives you 12 premier league players um all gold and then three rare it's basically a 25k pack of premier league players and this is why um this right here for me makes the promo a dub i know a lot of you guys maybe did you know 10 15 20 of these your clubs just you don't have the coins to be able to do a ton of these you don't want to go broke during this period i totally totally understand that so i understand why some people might be kind of frustrated with this promo because it doesn't cater to somebody who's like on a lower than a 500k budget it really doesn't because if you did more than like I mean, you have to do a decent amount of these upgrade packs unless you get insanely lucky to be able to pack a team of the year card, right? I got insanely lucky. I packed two Contes, but one of them was a duplicate. I had to submit into an SBC, and I also got Allison. We're not done yet. Maybe I pack another one. Probably not, though. Um, but that's pretty insane luck. I spent 1.5 million coins on upgrades. I made my monies back, and I was able to craft a bunch of SBCs. Two base icon upgrades, almost three. David Luiz, Bernardo Silva, Suarez, um... I think there was one more in that, I, that I did as well. I did another another card along the line somewhere. But um, these, th these upgrade SBCs really made the promo for those that are on a higher budget. But, you know, like for the rest of the promo, we Trent, player of the month. I mean, that's not part of the promo, I guess. The 83 plus upgrade was not very good for me. At least we were getting these SBCs that came out. And that's one other thing I want to make. Another downfall and another L of this promo was the untradeable pack rewards that they kept putting out out of these SBCs, dude. I don't know, understand. I mean, I do kind of understand why they're putting out untradeable pack rewards, but it just sucks, man. It just, it makes less people want to do the SBC, especially when it's overpriced already. A lot of people were not very happy with this, and it was very, very prevalent during this promo. David Louise rewards were uh, untradeable. I think like half of Hazard's rewards are untradeable as well, if we go look at Hazard. 
it's kind of weird, right? Because the first three, these are tradable, one, two, three, and then the next three are untradable when they get to the higher level packs. So that is kind of like a, that's kind of a head scratcher and, and puzzling right there that they did that. So that was another part of the, kind of the not so good part of this promo is the fact that they started using untradable rewards as packs back um, inside of the game. So again, a lot of positives from this promo. I mean, the fact that they made these team of the years very packable, in my opinion, is a major W as well. I was able to pack myself two team of the years. I've never packed a team of the year before. And if you go look on Twitter, tons and tons of people are packing team of the year. So it's just crazy, crazy to see the amount of people that have packed these cards. So I think that's a W as well. Um, not making these cards um, super duper rare that nobody, nobody could pack them, but still making them very hard to pack and requiring a lot of luck. I spent 1.5 mil on SBCs. I'm very happy that I got one. Last year, I spent around 2 mil on up the upgrades and I didn't get one. So I'm happy with my luck this year for sure. Um, and I felt like I gave myself a chance, plenty of chances to get uh, to get some of those team of the year cards. And hopefully that you guys got some of them too. Now, I think I covered just a lot of the things out of this promo. Again, we talked about player cards. We talked about the team. We talked about the cards that were in packs, the drop rate, the boost, the selection, the voting process as well. I think that was all done nicely this year. Um, the SBCs, again, were just kind of average. And again, it really catered towards the upper tier audience. Now, if you're on the lower tier audience with not a lot of coins, maybe more, you have to do some more of the, like the, the objective grind on the game because you don't have as many coins to buy things yet. You know, maybe you're happy with ZH. Maybe you're happy with Iniesta. But uh, they certainly didn't make a lot of stuff just easy to do. And they didn't give a lot of options for people that are on that lower range of the promotion, which kind of makes sense, I guess, because it's team of the year, right? At least they were giving you guys some of these pack pulls, like the team of the year challenge SBCs to do. But when they make them untradeable, you know, people who don't have coins, they're not going to be packing team of the years out of this or cards that have value to actually improve their club. So there's just less, less people that probably want to do these things, to be honest with you, when they see that they are untradeable. But all in all, I think I'm going to give this promo and this is going to be a little bit biased because of my pack weight, I think, and because of my coin total and how I could actually use and participate in this promo again with my higher coin total. I'm going to give this thing an eight out of 10. I really think it was a solid promo. The card selection was good. Um, could I rate it higher? The only thing that would make me rate it higher, you know what? Maybe eight out of 10 is a little bit high too. Maybe seven and a half out of 10 might be my final, my final number, seven and a half out of 10. If they would have valued some of these SBCs at a lower price, especially Dava Louise. And if they would have boosted a lot of the other players like Iniesta, if they would have boosted his stats, David Luiz boosts his a little bit more. And then of course, boost Marcelo's uh, stats as well. I think Marcelo and Iniesta were the two that really needed the stat boost. Um, then I think I would have given this promo a lot higher of a rating. And then making all the track, the packs tradable, please. Now not the upgrade packs, not the 25Ks, but making the packs back from SBCs and the daily SBCs, make those tradable. And you will have so many more people that are involved, that are having fun and doing stuff during team of the year if you make packs like this tradable so again seven and a half i think it's a pretty solid rating not a bad start you know the, i was very very excited when they dropped these sbcs the upgrades because that's what i was looking forward to during this promotion and again and that's going to go for a lot of these videos as we as we wrap this one up a lot of these rate the promo videos, you guys are probably going to have different opinions, right? Because we all have different focuses. We all have different goals and we all have different situations in foot. We all like different things, right? Some of you guys like league SBCs. Some of you guys like trading with icons, doing the base icon upgrade five times instead of doing the league uh, SBC five different times, right? We all have different motivations, different desires, and different uh, motives on FIFA, right? So that's why I want to take a look at these promos from as all of a broad range as I can and say, how did this, how did people who like League SBCs like this promo? How did people on low coin budgets like this promo? How did people with tons of coins like this promo? So again, I think I'm going to give it a seven and a half out of 10. Considering we, we know team of the year is always kind of a money grab promo. You got to open packs, stuff like that. But I think they made team of the years more accessible this year through packs than they ever had, just based on the amount of supply that they had in the market. For goodness sake, you can go buy a team of the year card right now for 440,000 coins. Like that's insane. That's mental. I don't think we've ever had that opportunity to do that before. Allison right now is 440 
3,000 coins for his team of the year goalkeeper card. So uh, GG, GG's to EA on that one. That's like half the price of what De Gea was last year. I think De Gea was like 800 or 900K at one point. So that's very interesting. And I'm, I'm kind of glad that they did that. So at least more people are able to afford a team of the year item, even if it's just the goalkeeper. So seven and a half out of 10 is how I rated this year for 2020s or 2019 FIFA 20s uh, team of the year. Hopefully we have another rate the promo episode coming next week with, we will feature our first guest. I'll get that sorted and it'll be fun. It'll be something different on the channel, spice it up for you guys. And also bring you some sort of new content, looking at this game that we so dearly love. And hopefully maybe EA can see these videos and, uh, and maybe use it as a way to get some feedback from us and stuff like that on this game. So if you enjoyed this video and you like the idea of the rate, the promo series, hit the thumbs up button, show your support. Let me know that you like these videos. Drop a comment down below if you have any suggestions for this series or for anything else going forward. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.